So I think over the last uh, few years, what we have been doing uh, as human beings is shaping the way the planet, uh, the direction of the planet and this direction. And fundamentally, this has been dictated by economic considerations. Um, so what we have been engaging in is what we call human cent centric design, which isn't really going the way it was planned to. And it's about time that we start thinking about the limits of the planet um, so that you can make the limits of the planet and the, lim the needs of people come together uh, to achieve, you know, a sustainable development, which you would, which you can say, call a people planet approach towards the future. And the bottom line is that cities have become our new habitat and we need to do things to address overall development. And I, and I say that as, uh, you know, with cities as a, uh, you know, as, as a starting point, because they are our new habitat and, and, and buildings are what consume a significant amount of uh, natural resource. Um, well, and the next number now after transport is, is fast fashion. So one of our objectives is not only to humanize buildings, but to create an environment that, that allows us uh, to move away from this idea of constant consumption. Um, and to that effect, our studio has been experimenting at a few different scales. The first is the scale of cities and, and buildings. This is a small project in Bangalore. It's about a lakh square feet, and it's the beginning of, or it was to announce the beginning of a new 125 acre uh, township. It's called the Discovery Center, and it's a demonstration of uh, significant uh, of uh, sustainable development uh, at scale and uh, a building for the masses. So this is actually a town hall for that small city, and it was developed with uh, progressive building techniques. Uh, it's a completely die construction, and this building can actually be put, can be knocked down and reassembled in a matter of six months. It uses a lot of waste material. Uh, and it also uses a lot of long lifespan material. Um, so that's one. I think when we engage in greenfield development, it's important to engage in greenfield in a progressive manner where you're building for the future. So you're, and when you're building for the future, you must understand that your, um, your expression and uh, your aspirations have to be for the next 50 to 100 years, and it cannot be rooted purely in the past. Having said that, we have a lot of uh, residual space and, you know, townships, cities, houses, buildings that were created uh, in the past. And you cannot ignore them. You can't just let them be waste. So it's time to sort of engage in, uh, to give them a new life, like to give them a whole new fresh um, position in, in today's world. And to that effect, the second set of development that you have to do is regeneration. So this is a small example of an old step well that was uh, uh, in, in Jodhpur, which has been sort of, uh, which used to be a dumping ground and has now been over, over a few months cleaned up uh, by us and reju reju rejuvenated to become a fresh water aquifer uh, and a space and a democratic space for a lot of people to use. Um, so I call this the need for a new century of, uh, you know, rejuvenation or regeneration. Uh, it doesn't have to be only be done in purely historic context like this. Um, and these are just a few examples of what we're doing, but it can also be done in more contemporary context using, uh, you know, the best of what India has to offer. So this is a building in, uh, this is a building which was about 30 years old in, in New Delhi, in Okla, in a, uh, and Okla has over, over the years become a fairly acrid, uh, dirty, uh, acidic environment, which nothing much to offer except, um, you know, uh, a lot of wild animal infestation and such. So this building was created, uh, you know, to conserve most of what was put together in the previous uh, iteration of the previous form of this, which was, you know, uh, a, a typical RCC structure with very little to offer. What we did here was we stripped down everything to its bare bones and wrapped the building around the skin that's sort of like a coat of armor to protect it from its surroundings. 
um, and that's about where we went into lockdown and we realized that you know our problems have only compounded it's not now limited to the city because cities may fundamentally have to change um, and and our approach to uh, to to people uh, to social interaction may have to change uh, so uh, we developed something called um, a choker an s choker which is you know a sort of uh, a sign of the times a bit like the aids ribbon or the livestrong band that also works on which, which is not like your uh, your uh, uh, you know the arogya setu app which is tracking you all the time but it's a non invasive tracking device to identify whether you're safe or not safe and such using something called a mesh wifi network um, this was picked up and then i think i believe now a lot of people a lot of uh, companies in china and the us have started and some in europe have started develop have developed much smaller fact form factors of this same device which are you know as small as rings um but you also have to not only innovate you also have to see what resource you have and continue using the same spirit as what we're doing in cities at a smaller scale where we started for the need because there was a need for uh emergency healthcare which wouldn't go away very quickly we developed a series of modules uh, based on containers used containers uh shipping containers to develop uh, you know healthcare setups uh and those healthcare setups could then become modular assemblies even in terms of uh, conflict or you know whenever em- emergency medical evacuation and such was required and finally transform into you know usable spaces such as offices and what not with so your overall environmental impact is reduced and can become social uh, spaces for social use this has now uh, been adopted by the delhi government uh, as a pilot project for mohalla clinics we'll be doing 20 of them over the next 45 days uh, as you know emergency or immediate healthcare for uh, for 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 places that don't uh, they don't have access to such uh, facilities and um, it's it's free of course and it's free for all to use um, and um, and the initiative will eventually be multiplied into 200 or uh, the objective is that you clean up the immediate area and finally piggy back it uh, into something else so what you see right on top is a library module so you have a healthcare module below and you have an education module on top um, so when you you set up this in a in you know uh, in a squatter settlement or a, or an informal settlement then uh, people can actually you know who don't have access to uh, you know to to quiet space in their homes can actually have access to this because it's available 24/7 um and i also believe eventually that the the, the mechanism that we use for transport has to change uh, for which we had developed uh, try and share that as well a, a a capsule for automated transport um, i hope my screen is visible on that so what we've done is we developed a capsule for automated transport which is sort of an autonomous vehicle for use in indian cities um so you can this this is this replaces mass transit uh, such as buses and metros it's a lot easier accessible um has frequency control that means you can be actually picked up uh with the convenience of a of a private vehicle or a or a cab uh but the ownership of this is a community ownership uh so this is a uh, this is a, a scheme that we're actually now talking to a large uh, uh, a large corporation for um, a large uh, car manufacturer for to actually adopt uh, a, a project like this or to or to or to demonstrate a project like this for uh, for the indian setting uh yeah that's about it so i think i think the objective of, of what we're doing now is to say that you know you have to start the future of design and future of development has to go from being purely people centric to actually adopting methods that can work towards conservation of resource a reduction of overall consumption uh, a change in the pattern of consumption consumption possibly a change in our economic uh, framework and our economic paradigm and eventually uh, you know demonstrate something which, uh, which embraces both the limited natural resources that we have and uh, human ambition